Thanks very much for coming in. Um, now, some people may have seen you on Close Up last night um, on our eminent news program oh. and, uh, and won't have any idea what the Venus Project is. What is, what is the Venus Project and, and your, uh, both of your involvements in it? Well, the Venus Project is a world organization designed to bring an end to poverty, hunger, war, and human stupidity. We're not the smartest animals on the block, are we? We're not the smartest animals on the block? No, not at all. One of the worst. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you guys are based in Florida, in the United States? Yes, in and Venus, Florida. In Venus, Florida. Sounds cool in itself. Is, it a, um, is, is this a, a dream for the future, or is this a practical, uh, a practical plan that we could put into place and actually make, things, make a change? It could have been put into place in 1927, if people knew about it. But very few people know anything about it. You want me to tell you what it is? Yes, I do. Well, the Venus Project is a method for social design in which all of the Earth's resources are declared the common interest of all the world's people without the separation of nations because all people need clean air, clean water, a relevant education, and security. We don't have that in the world. Man is lousing up the oceans, the atmosphere, one another, killing one another. Soldiers are killing machines. And we, if we had anything to do with it, we'd send them back to school to become problem solvers, to bridge the difference between nations, not kill each other. So I'd say we're not civilized yet. Why, why, do you, why do you think it is that we form things like, why well, we have to have borders, why we have to have separate nations? Why, why do you think the human, the human race developed like that? In the old days, we didn't know any better. We didn't know how to live. Well, if you really think about it, think about what I'm saying now. If we use the money that the World War II cost, that is, I'm talking about Germany flattened out, France bombed flat, England bombed, and all the ships, 400 ships on the bottom of the sea. The cost of World War II in city damage, military expenditures, and losses could have built hospitals, housing all over the world, wiped out the slums all over the world. How stupid can you be? It does, I mean, and, and people need to know, I guess, that, you, that you're not just saying this from an idealistic point of view. You're not, no, you're I'm not, not an you're, idealist. I'm a dirty realist. A dirty realist. And a dirty realist who, at 94 years old, is taking this message around the world, which I think is admirable in itself, and obviously shows that you've, you've got a passion for it. What's your history as far as design and... Um, and oh, well, I mean, where did you start out, and where did, where did your mind get to, uh, get to expand, first and foremost? I was doing the big depression in the United States. It was all over the world. 1929, the stock market crashed, and all the banks failed, most of the banks. And people who bought houses and cars were kicked out of their houses because they couldn't pay them off. The banks failed, so they lost their money. And bankers were jumping out of windows with small banks, but the big banks made out all right. So what happened... Sounds a little familiar. <laughs> the, the money system generates most corruption because you can pay off senators. The Pure Food and Drug Administration is now occupied by people from the drug industry. There was a book written in America called 100 Million Guinea Pigs, and it showed how the drug industry used to shaft people. Uh, the drug industry found out that celery juice can lower blood pressure but there's no money in it, so you sell pills. So our, all nations are basically corrupt. There's not a clean nation in the world because they uphold the old institution. They're called established. Now, we don't want an established society. We want an emergent society. It's always changing and updating. There's, people call me utopian. I'm not a utopian. You can't design an ideal city. You can only design the best city you know how with the knowledge of today. But tomorrow, the cities I design will be a straitjacket to the kids of the future. They'll design their own cities. That's why we don't want to make statue of fresco. Your whole thing is back. 
you move on. There are no utopias, no final frontiers, no best laptop you can design except for the time. But as time goes on, all things change continuously. There are no final frontiers. Who, who are the people that, or what are the reasons that people give for this not becoming a reality? To, 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 to not try and reach these, these ideas? They are educated today to uphold established institutions. People are not elected to political office to change things. They are elected to keep things as they are. And in order to do that, you have to manage news. And you say, well, I don't think we ought to release that. I don't think we ought to say this. And we become artificial, completely artificial. So our society is comprised of artificialities that don't work. When you sign treaties with other countries, if that treaty doesn't serve your interest, you violate it. That's been all through history. All through history, men were killing other people. Where do you think the United States got all that land? They took it from the Indians and the Spaniards and the Mexicans. There'd be people, there'd people though, who, if they had had the choice themselves, they would have said, well, I wouldn't have done that back then. I wouldn't have taken their land. Well, people don't have a choice. They yeah. can't think that way. Yeah. Because in schools, they manage what you hear, and they manage what they teach. All schools, not just America. They're all corrupt. Breaking that cycle is going to be um, a very hard job, or it's going to take. It's going to take a huge. The tipping point for that cycle to break is going to be a. There's going to be quite going to be a lot of people behind you. Well, a lot of people will be unemployed, lose their homes and cars. This is just the beginning of the downfall of the global civilization. They're all artificial. They're based on money. With money, you pay off politicians. If you're given 10 million to run and somebody's only given 1 million, you don't have a democracy. We never had a democracy. In America, people are so stupid, they think that you can take back your democracy. If you don't have purchasing power, you can only live in an old house. And if you have minimum wage, you, you can't buy a new car, you have to buy a used car. And that breaks down more than a new car. So you're in debt all your life. You have nothing to show for it, so man invented heaven out there. <laughs> After you kick yeah. the bucket, then... Everything's going to be fine! Yeah. Now, that's a myth. The proof that it's a myth. Now, um, if, you, if you take people and, and they work hard and they have nothing to show for it, you give them that illusion. Now, think about what I'm saying. If the Pope comes to America, he points to God. If he goes to China, he points the wrong way. Because the earth is round, they didn't know that. When he goes to <laughs> Brazil, he points sideways. So heaven, they used to think the earth was flat, so heaven was always up there. You can tell now... He's, made a, he's made a few mistakes that Pope, hasn't he? <laughs> religion is a control device. Now, not by a lot of preachers today think it's real. But when you examine religion honestly and carefully, you'll see in it, judge not, lest you be judged. Don't ever do jury duty is what that means. Because you don't know what conditions warp the mind of a person that commits crimes. I believe that all criminals, serial killers, murderers, are made that way by this culture, some different aspect of the culture. For example, if you were raised in the South, you're going to speak with a southern accent in America. Hmm. And if you go out in the country with uneducated people, they say things like this in America. I'm going to give me a nigga and I'm going to kick his ass in. That is not natural to that person. Hmm. They learn that it's in conditioning. the environment. Yeah. Conditioning. My guest in the studio is Jacques Fresco, uh, the, the founder of the Venus Project. We'll be back with more after a bit of news. Yeah. Beautiful, Jacques. Awesome. Right.